Hello everyone, my name is Lance Luffabeer and in this video I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on a Novatel OEM V receiver. Uh, before we get started here, there's one thing that you'll probably need and that is the auth code from Novatel for firmware updates. Uh, in the auth code also is what model, what software models are included in this. And this part here is the code that I'm going to need. Um, but that code is only valid on this receiver and it includes these models on this firmware. So this info you'll have to have ahead of time before you get started. Or you can install the auth code later, but it may not be usable after you do a firmware update before you do the auth code, which is kind of like the software license for the receiver. So the first thing we need to do is go and get the, uh, the firmware. So we're going to go out to Novatel.com and download the current firmware, which as of today is version 3.900. So that's under the support site, and I want firmware and software, click the right thing, firmware and software and manuals. On this page, firmware and software, we're looking for product updates, so I click there. And I want firmware for the OEMV family, so I click there. And we're looking for the OEM V firmware, the OEM version, version 3.900. Click on that to download. And while that's downloading here, I'm just going to minimize this. Now my receiver is already connected to this computer, but uh, you'll want to confirm that you can connect to the receiver through a serial port. And this does have to be a wired serial port, not a Bluetooth wireless connection. So I'm going to open up the configuration software and just make a connection to it to confirm that I do have the right receiver. And I know this receiver is on uh, COM1 and I've already tested this before the video, it's at 9600 baud, but if you have to reset it you can. So the things you want to confirm at this point that you have an auth code that matches this serial number, which is the serial number of the card in the receiver, not the serial number of the chassis. And uh, if you're wondering what firmware version you're on right now, in this case it's 3.803, and uh, these are the, the model code that is currently installed on this receiver. So I know that I can connect to the receiver, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to disconnect from it, from the configuration software, and close that, because I don't need that for the time being. Let's see if our download's done here. It is. So I'm going to open that file up. It is a zip file that we downloaded, and I don't need the web browser anymore. So these files that we downloaded, I'm going to copy those to the desktop. So I'm going to select all, right-click copy. Why is that? And I'm just going to paste them out here on the desktop. Alright, so now that you have finished extracting those files to the desktop, we're going to open up WinLoad and we're going to use it to send that 3900.hex file to it. 3900.hex is the firmware, WinLoad is the program we're going to use to do the firmware flash. So with that open, we're going to go to Settings, COM Settings, and you want to confirm that your COM port is the appropriate port to connect to your receiver on. You want the download baud rate preferably to be at 115,000, but you could run it at a slower speed if you have a poor quality cable or something and the connect baud rate should always be 9600. So hit OK. We're going to go to File, File Open, and we're going to select 3900.hex, and we're going to click on Query Card. Now what we're going to do is turn off the receiver, power it off, give it a couple seconds, and then I'm going to power it back up. And you'll notice that as soon as I power it up, this software catches the, the receiver as it's booting up and interrupts it in order to start um, in this case, it's not really the download process, it's more of just a scan on what's in the receiver. You'll see it here when this progress bar completes.
So it finds a bunch of information about the card and it fills in some information over here. Uh, the PSN is that serial number of the card. So now what we want to do is go to write flash. And again it's going to search for the card. So this time we're going to turn the receiver off again. Give it a couple seconds to completely power off. And then power it up again. And this time we're going to send the firmware to it. So you want to just sit back and wait, let it send the firmware, you don't really want to interrupt it while it's doing this. Alright, the authorization code, that was on that desktop, which of course it doesn't want to let me get to right now. So we're going to skip that step for the moment. Ideally, if you have the authorization code on the clipboard of your computer, then you can just paste it in there real easily and have it send that as well. Alright, so I did cut a couple minutes out of that video there. It took uh, two or three minutes to send the firmware to the receiver over the serial port and once it was complete it'll say done on the screen here. So at this point now we can close the program and for fun let's open up the configuration software again and see what it says. I'm going to click on connect and in this case after it flashed to the new firmware we're on the right firmware version but now we have an invalid auth code which is expected because I forgot to uh, copy that to my clipboard and paste it into that uh, field when it asked me for it. So what we're going to do is open up the auth code, the, the file that we got, the, the data we got from Novatel. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard, right click copy. I mean you could type it in if you wanted to but that's a whole lot to type. And I'm going to go over to configuration, type a command, and we're going to type in AUTH space and then I'm going to right click paste that auth code in and click send command. So now that receiver is going to process that and save that to the permanent memory and reboot. So if we disconnect and then reconnect, you notice that this time feature set is the, the appropriate features, the model, but I'm also with the new firmware, which is exactly what we want. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope this makes your firmware updates go much smoother. Have a great day.